What are you made out of? Cells? Molecules? Fundamental particles? Matter, right? Of course, everyone knows that. My second question is why are you made out of matter? Why is anything made out of matter? Or why does anything exist in the first place? The Big Bang, right? However, once we begin to delve deeper into this train of thought, a glaring and major discrepancy very quickly manifests. No matter your experience with physics, you probably know about, or at least have heard of, a little law known as the conservation of energy, one of the most fundamental laws in all of physics. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transferred between different forms. It is always conserved, and our experiments back this. So why then do we exist at all? We know from Einstein that energy and mass are equivalent, so your existence is physically the possession of energy, which means that there must be a lack or deficit of energy somewhere else in the universe. Negative energy, think about that physically aside from all the mathematics. Particles were created in the Big Bang. Our current models backed by observation show matter is formed from energy. Yes, photons of light contain energy and are able to decay to produce particle-antiparticle pairs. Energy is always conserved in this decay, along with other quantities such as momentum, charge and baryon number. Baryons are particles like protons or neutrons made up of three quarks, but let's not gloss over what else is produced, an antiparticle. These have been experimentally observed and have the same properties as their matter partner, only opposite. For example, an antiproton has a baryon number of minus one and a charge of minus one, but they do not have negative mass. Since energy and mass are intrinsically the same and are absolute, you could not have negative energy nor negative mass. The reverse of this decay equation is also true. A particle-antiparticle pair can annihilate to produce photons, and all the conservation laws are satisfied. So in order for the Big Bang to have produced the matter we are made from, it must have also produced an equal amount of antimatter in order to conserve energy. One would ultimately come to the conclusion that then the antimatter should interact and annihilate all the matter soon after, resulting in nothing. Energy is conserved, a universe that starts with zero energy must end with such, and thus there should be zero matter content. Yet, everything we see and are made out of is made of matter, which entirely contradicts these fundamental laws, leaving us wondering where all the antimatter has gone. Those of you versed on quantum mechanics may think of quantum fluctuations throughout space. Essentially, there's an uncertainty related to energy which has been shown to fluctuate and can concentrate just enough energy in one location to spontaneously produce a particle-antiparticle pair. This has also been proven, however these pairs quickly converge and annihilate, leaving us once more with a universe which should be empty of matter. The modern scientific method is built upon observation. Our models and theories have to faithfully reproduce results from experiments and predict the outcomes of future ones, otherwise they're garbage and get discarded for other theories. This has proved successful so far, and has led to many ideas being seen above the theory status and as a truth, things as fundamental as energy conservation. Yet, now we know that this seemingly mundane observation that we exist, and we see almost no antimatter in the universe, appears to contradict energy conservation. So should we discard energy conservation? which would lead to a reboot of almost all modern physics? Or is there another solution to our problem? People have conjured up ideas such as postulating that in the Big Bang, the matter and the antimatter equally produced were spread so far apart by the vast arrays of energy being released, which would lead to no annihilation until much later at the end of the universe. We know things get a bit weird in the early universe with inflation and other effects like the unification of forces, but no physical models are able to justify this idea as the case, so it's unlikely to solve our issue. We see no antimatter galaxies, or stars, and no huge annihilation events which you'd expect to occur between matter and antimatter galaxies when they would eventually collide. Another more creative idea is that the antimatter particles went on to produce their own antimatter universe acting backwards in time. Feynman diagrams show nuclear decays, I showed one earlier, and they always have arrows for antiparticles going backwards on the time axis. This is since antiparticles can be well explained as regular particles which are moving backwards in time. A radical theory, but it seems to work, on smaller scales. However, experiments don't show antiparticles repelling matter and travelling back in time. They all seem to attract and annihilate, leading us back to the problem as to why we should exist at all. Although physicists hate to speculate without firm foundations, we could turn to the world of philosophy for an answer. The anthropic principle states that the way the universe is is such that we were produced and are able to observe it that way. Essentially meaning that the reason we see the laws of physics as they are is only because these are the only set or one of the only combinations which allows for the creation of a universe stable enough that we humans would eventually survive in. For example, planets and stars need to form first before we can form, which then allows us to observe the universe. Think now about a universe which obeys energy conservation down to a T. It would just be an empty void with nothing in it. Obviously we would not exist and so that's why the universe cannot possibly be like that. There's the weak and strong variations of the anthropic principle. I'll let you look them up if you're interested. However, in general, it provides a way for scientists to attribute the reason things occur is we wouldn't be here to see them if they were different. 
Applied to our problem, one could argue that perhaps one of the previous solutions were correct in allowing for matter to be present and for us to be here, or at the very least shouldn't be ruled out. Going deeper into philosophy, some religious folk might attribute it to the work of a god or a higher power. And then there's always the idea that we could in fact live in a simulation, but that's the topic for a future video. One thing is certain though, we exist in some physical or energetic form, and this in itself is evidence enough to shake up the fundamental laws of physics, which is pretty awesome, but also scary. The problem in this video is known as the matter-antimatter asymmetry for reference. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new, and like the video if you've enjoyed. Thank you for watching.